Let's jump into our game preview here, gents. Obviously, the first matchup we get treated to is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to take on the Tennessee Titans on Saturday. That game kicks off at 4.30 Eastern time on CBS. The Tennessee Titans already taking precautions to help avoid Cincinnati Bengals fans from filling the stadium by changing the transfer rules within 24 hours of the game kicking off. You like that tactic, gentlemen, or uh, you know, you feel like it kind of prohibits the open market from being, uh, you know, essentially what we use. Well, there's a there's a huge debate in the secondary ticket market whether or not uh, tickets are property or are they're a bus pass, basically a, a a a a plane ticket. Because if it's a plane ticket, they're not transferable. It, it still belongs to the airline. You just have the right to use it for that time. Now, like it's it's it can kind of tricky though when teams uh, they they charge for PSLs, these personal seat licenses, where that's something that you actually own. But by and large, teams want to believe that you're there as guests of theirs and you're paying a cover charge essentially to enter and that's not transferable. I personally think if you buy something, it belongs to you. If you want if you're a Bengals fan, and you want to pay five grand a ticket to sit in the 50 yard line. You should be able to do that. You shouldn't have the team mess with what that tells me, quite honestly, is the Titans don't have faith in their fans. They don't have belief that their fans are going to show up and be there and support their team. Which is crazy because Nashville is a fantastic sports market. I, I went to the Titans Chiefs game there uh, back in October, and it is a phenomenal place. The vibe is great. They shouldn't have to go to these lengths. I know they're trying to protect home field advantage, but to me, this seems like it's kind of inf- infringing a little bit on the, uh, the the rights of the consumer. I'm I'm right there with them. Listen, uh, we uh, we love money in in the United <laughs> States. I can't even say this country because I'm not in that country right now. Um, but we love money. We love capitalism, and I, I think that once you purchase something, once you own a ticket like that, you should be able to do whatever you want with it. So I don't understand why they would do that. Um, just from a not not from you know obviously like Adam said, they're trying to protect what they have there. They're trying to get their fans in there to be loud and proud and you know to win this football game but for me I just think that it sets a a bad precedent because you're gonna have people that want to spend ten thousand dollars to sit at the 50 yard line to watch their team and you're not allowing the average individual the average American the average Titans fan to be able to make that money because half the time these people can't even go, especially if they're season ticket holders might have things that they already have scheduled out. And they really weren't planning, you know, on making it to the divisional round of the playoffs, maybe as a home game. So they had, you know, trips scheduled and they can't go anyway. So cancel that for, trip. for me, I mean, yeah, you could always cancel the trip, but just sell the ticket and allow them to sell the ticket. Yeah. I, that. Yeah. I mean, my sense is largely with yours, Dalton. Um, the, the the question is this: um, What is the maximum amount of profit a team can exact from their product? Because they own the stadium. Well, they own the stadium. Sometimes the city owns it too. But that is their that is their domain. Um, the, the products obviously there's uh, the players, their employees, all the staff, their their employees. They own proprietary rights to that product. And uh, they're pro- they probably kick themselves when they can't sell that 50 yard ticket on the for, you know the, the primary market for five grand. They just can't do it, but they wish they could. So what they're trying to do is look at you, by the way. My God, come on, really, really, Miller? <laughs> he's, he's, he's out here changing up on us. The first the first time I do a show with you, is this how it's going to be from now on? Is this how it's going to be? You know, I'm making a point. I'm bloviating there. You just pinky up having a little sip of Merlot. My God. Wildness, wildness. The here's you're the thing. Mute, also, you're mute there, Dalton. I can't hear you. D- Dalton's living the best life over there right now. Pinky I'm up. trying not to echo, so I've I've muted my microphone in between talking. So I, I'm I'm trying not to be too bad over here. Appreciate appreciate your courtesy. Appreciate that, Dalton. Gentlemen, let's waste no more time here. Let's get into our game preview. Now, first off, I think the major question about this game on Saturday, obviously 4.30 Eastern time on CBS, the question rolling around being, can the Bengals keep riding their momentum? They've got the hot hand right now. They've been in a rhythm, and they're no stranger to kind of being in the spotlight a little bit here. And I think that one of the reasons that we talk about the Tennessee Titans and the tickets, look, Broadway Joe, he sells a lot of tickets. The appeal of him right now in the NFL is huge. 
And which Titans fan would necessarily want to pay to see five yard passes by Ryan Tannehill and obviously a lot of running the ball. Now, if it's Derrick Henry running the ball, which more than likely it will be, you like seeing Derrick Henry play, but I don't care too much to see Ryan Tannehill throwing five yard outs and five yard stick routes and things like that. I want to see high, high action. I want to see Jamar Chase. I want to see Joe Burrow airing it out a little bit. I want to see Joe Mixon trying to run heavy, uh, you know, against this team. So really my question to you gentlemen, do you think in this game, the Bengals will keep riding the momentum that's gotten them into the NFL playoffs? Obviously the top spot inside the AFC North. I'll let you jump ahead. Dalton, get in there. It's going to be tough. Um, for me, I, I looked at the Titans, and, and Adam and I looked at the Tennessee Titans a little bit differently. He had them as a, one of the lower teams um, in the playoffs, but I believe you still had them above the Cincinnati Bengals. Did nope. you have them? I, I, had, them I, I, had, the ten, I had them like 10th in my power rankings or 12th. So, yeah. So you expect the, the Cincinnati Bengals to win this football game, and I can't st- sit here right now and say that I don't either. Um, I want the Cincinnati Bengals to win, and it's just purely because I think they're the more fun football team. I think when you look at the playoffs and you look at how the the narrative is with the playoffs, run game and defense are what win in the playoffs. And if Ryan Tannehill can go out there and he can be efficient, if he can turn around and act like he's handing the ball off and then turn back around and layer throws in between linebackers and safeties to a, a crossing A.J. Uh, Brown or uh, AJ, yeah, AJ Brown, yeah, AJ Brown or Julio Jones. Um, I think that they're going to have a lot of success. It's it's not all going to come down to Derrick Henry, in my opinion. Um, I think that they've had a little bit of a run game with Dante Foreman. Um, they have a little bit, even with Hilliard, when he has come in and ran the ball as well. I think the Cincinnati Bengals have a good defense, but you know, at the end of the day, for me, it all comes down to Ryan Tannehill, and that's why for me, in the Saturday games, he's the one to watch. Yeah, so um, I completely agree with everything you said. I have zero confidence in the Titans. I have very little confidence in Ryan Tannehill. Uh, I think they were one of the three or four worst teams in the playoffs, their record notwithstanding. Um, and I think they they might be in real trouble if they have some injury concerns at cornerback, which they've had all year, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jack Rabbit Jenkins has been dealing with an ankle injury. He didn't practice this past week. Uh, you know, Buster Scrine's a little banged up. I'm sure he's going to play, but you know, then you're getting down to the Kristen Fultons, the Elijah Moldens, the, the Greg Mavens of the world. And, and here's the thing, the Cincinnati offense is so dynamic. I mean, so dynamic. They're second, I think in yards per pass at like 7.9, uh, the, the, the Titans defense pass defense is middle of the pack. I, they're 18th or something in yards per, per pass or allowed. So you're taking a real strength against not a weakness, but a mediocrity, I guess is fair to say. Uh, and, and the Titans, the personnel is just is just not great. So I, I don't think Cincinnati is going to have trouble moving the football. Uh, Tennessee's uh, you know, their goal to go defense is really good. And the red zone defense is really good. They're top 10 in both. And that's the reason they're fifth in scoring. Uh, but I do think Cincinnati is going to move the ball up and down the field. And if they're able to punch it in, if Burrow can make them pay in the red zone, they're going to win the game. One thing to look at here, you know, the Bengals are looking to become the fourth team in 13 seasons to advance to a conference championship game after the the year after them finishing last in the division prior. This would be huge, obviously, for Zach Taylor going around doing the bar, the bar stool kind of uh, strut there, going to different bars and handing out game balls to fans. You got to love that about him. That spot him some good faith because it wasn't not too long ago there were rumors of Zach Taylor potentially being done after this season. Now, really getting to the playoffs is a big thing. Now they've kind of settled those, uh, you know, those coals down a little bit there. Also, for the Bengals, being a road game, they are 0-7 in franchise history in road playoff games. Can they turn it around for the first time ever? Hey, how many of those did Joe Burrow appear in? Zero. Zero. Uh, Zero. Yeah. Zero. Um, the, the one thing that frightens me just a little bit when it comes to the Cincinnati Bengals offense is Jeffrey Simmons. Um, he's yeah. been an absolute monster this year. And if there is one weakness on that offense for the Cincinnati Bengals, it is that center and right guard combo. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons is going to eat. They're going to have to help out with him. But at the end of the day, Jeffrey Simmons is still only one man. So he it'll be going. interesting to see yeah, how that the, turns the, out. The, 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 Titans, the Titans have a pretty good pass rush. Uh, yeah. I think they're like 13th maybe in sack rate. And the Bengals are terrible in pass protection. Like they, they, and, the, they and the Dolphins had a competition of who was the worst pass pro team. Um, and their sack rate was second to last in the NFL. They gave up a sack basically once every 10 drop back. That's horrendous. So mm-hmm. if there is a way for the Bengals game to get wrecked, that's it. 
My man, Brett Yaris is just, he's a firecracker, man. When it comes to like hot takes, he says, Zach Taylor did what he's done his whole career. Luck into a good situation where others can prop him up. Yeah, at some point, we got to give credit to Zach Taylor. Look, Brian Callahan's done a fantastic job as the OC. Zach Taylor's also done a really good job getting Joe Burrow back. They've been a much, much better well-rounded team this year. A disciplined team, not only just on offense, defense, and special teams. That does fall on the head coach. He's done a really good job. So we got to give him some credit here in this regard. Any disagreements? Yeah, and, agreements? And, and, <laughs> what, what impresses me the most is um, he's taken a really young nucleus and gotten them to play like veterans quickly. And the question is, how much is that coaching? How much is that the player? The, the temperament of Joe Bur Burrow is a guy who's fearless and is going to rise to the occasion in any big moment. And Jamar Chase is just an absolute monster. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's helpful that those two guys are built to succeed early on. But to, to completely discount coaching, I think, is unfair to, to Zach Taylor. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some people out there that just don't believe in NFL coaching. These they, they think that these professionals are out there and they're doing it not all by themselves, obviously, but they think that, you know, the the impact that coaches have is is overhyped. And I don't believe that this is, however, a guy that just six months ago we were talking about him losing his job in Zach Taylor. Um, it was not a good experiment for a while um, and getting Joe Burrow and what? like Adam just said, man, his temperament, his ability to come in, into the NFL level. And we knew that he was going to be NFL ready from a physical standpoint. We loved his moxie coming out of LSU, but the way that he's been able to come out and, and just be an absolute monster when it comes to the leadership, the ability to, to look stone cold, dead pass rushers in the eye, being able to shake those guys. And he's not a big player either. I think he's like 6'2", 215. He's not a big quarterback, but he goes out there and he takes a beating. He's able to give a beating as well. When he gets hit, he's able to shake guys off. There's nobody, I don't think, in the NFL that is better at avoiding pressure. And part of it is because he's had a lot of practice with it, but part of it is just because he's a wizard back there. Um, and so I think his physicality, his moxie, gives this team an attitude. And I think that that is something that you can't discount. Yeah. I mean, obviously looking at, at coaching trees and everything like that, being linked with Sean, you know, Sean McVay, if you've shook in his hand, you've had a cup of coffee with him, or if you've seen him one time and just exchange high fives, all of a sudden you are in line here for a coaching job. I'm going to be in line for a coaching job here. Obviously I'm a big fan of the QB collective. Lo I love the videos yeah. that they're also putting out on their Twitter feed. I would love to attend a QB clinic, uh, quarterback collective clinic this summer. That would be really fun to be in. But outside of that gentleman, obviously let's get to our X factors here in this game. Here, I'm going to take a look here at the Bengals X factor. I think a lot of it's going to be Joe Mixon against a Titans second ranked rushing defense. You mentioned guys like Jeffrey Simmons. It's going to be a big test here. There's probably going to be more of a test for Joe Mixon in this Bengals offense than it was the Las Vegas Raiders who their run defense absolutely improved. This is going to be a much bigger test for them. Not to mention the say Titans team that is well rested, which could be a blessing or a curse, depending on, you know, we'll see how it goes on Saturday. Yeah. Mine's going to be, uh, I mean, red zone in general and goal to goal in particular. Uh, we don't, haven't talked a lot about uh, the, the Titans offense versus the, the Bengals defense. Uh, and neither of them are particularly good. They're both middle of the pack and almost every metric you look at. But one thing both do exceedingly well is force teams into field goals. Uh, the, 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 well, the, tit the Titans do very well at scoring touchdowns goal to go. And the, the Bengals are excellent at forcing field goals. So that's, that's the key to me is who's going to be able to punch it in first and goal from the five. Uh, if you're if you're the Titans, you're able to score the touchdown. You do it at almost a ninety percent rate. Uh, and if you're the Bengals, you stop opposition at basically a four every four every time to ten times. So that to me is going to be the key on that side of the ball. We haven't talked about that because the Titans' offense is boring as hell, and the Bengals' defense is boring as hell. But there it will come down to I think that matchup at some point. Can Tannehill and that offense punch into the end zone? It's going to be a big question, you know, and also another angle too. just looking at Ryan Tannehill in this offense. Can they flow down the field consistently? Look, I think the biggest question that we're going to have answered, how is Derrick Henry going to look after having all this time off, not having contact? Just yesterday, we were talking about it. Yesterday was his first contact padded practice since breaking his foot and having surgery. There, that is a long layoff from football, from football contact. I just remember back to when I was playing, when we go into training camp, you know, you're going in your first couple of days, it's helmets, it's, you know, shirt, shorts. And then when you first put on the pads, 
it's an adjustment. You're like, man, this is rough because it's been a couple months since we've done it. It's been the same thing here for Derek Henry. Now, granted, he is a genetic freak. We'll see how that plays out. Are you guys concerned maybe about this being Henry's first action back, or do you imagine he might be in a pitch count? You know, what is your opinion on that? I mean, I just don't know what to expect from him coming off of a broken foot. Now, I always kind of go back to he's a 250-pounder that had a broken foot. So I'm a little bit skeptical of just how effective he's going to be coming off of that. But the other thing, like you said, is he is a genetic freak. He won the lottery in that respect. So I don't know what to expect from, from Derrick Henry, really. Um, it, but for me, you know, I wanted to, to get into my X factor here. Um, for me, it's T. Higgins. Uh, T. Higgins did not have a good first playoff game, only caught one of his four targets for 10 yards. And I think that we've seen throughout the season when Jamar Chase has been taken away, it's really been T. Higgins. And obviously, Tyler Boyd can make plays as well. Azuma is a, a good receiving tight end, or at least Joe Burrow makes him look like a good receiving tight end. But T. Higgins has some legitimate chops as a wide receiver. He is a fantastic player. Um, and I think that he is going to really want to step up against this Tennessee Titans defense, which, you know, the strength of it is the, the safeties. It's Kevin Byard. It's Imani Hooker. The, the corners, Christian Fulton, I, I think has been a fantastic player, especially this year. I think he's grown a lot. Um, but outside of that, like if, if Fulton is on um, Jamar Chase and you have the, the safeties rolling over the top of Chase as well, kind of trying to take him away, T. Higgins is going to have to win his 1v1 if they're going to win this football game. Who's your X factor in this matchup here, uh, Adam? Oh, is, is Derrick Henry too stupid to say? Because no, I think so. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I mean, if 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 the best running back on the planet plays like the best running back on the planet, it's a total game changer for that offense because it brings back the play action that is Ryan Tannehill's bread and butter, and you got to respect it in a way you didn't when he was out. I think he's he is obviously determined to have a huge impact, but sometimes your body doesn't cooperate, and I think that's the greatest unknown. Going to be interesting to watch, obviously, going through this matchup here. The, the X's and O's, I mean, I think we can draw them up on a chalkboard, on a whiteboard. We can look at the film. But the reality is playoff football is so different. That's one thing we've noticed, except for the Arizona Cardinals. Not different for them. They That was a that was a tremendous disappointment this past week. That is one game we're looking at. Now, my Titans X factor kind of going into it, looking at I've got Ryan Tannehill listed here. And the reason why, I think he's going to have to have a big game if they want to have a chance to win. If the run game is kind of struggling, if it's inconsistent early on in this game, Ryan Tannehill is going to have to come through now the last time he was in a playoff game was last year against the indianapolis colts and in that game he only threw for 165 yards he did throw one touchdown and he had one interception that was absolutely at the most critical time ever and it was a bad interception it wasn't like the db made a great play he threw it directly to the defender there it's going to be on him because look you know while he's turned his career around in tennessee the biggest question for him now is can he get them past the playoff hump now granted you get a first round bye that's great and all can you get them out of that hump? Can you advance them to the to the AFC Championship game once again? And the biggest question mark is, can they get past an AFC Championship game? Well, they have to get past the Cincinnati Bengals team first that is very, very hungry. So we are looking forward to this matchup, ladies and gentlemen, coming up here this Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. You can complete, catch the complete recap here, profootballnetwork.com. And not to mention, on Sunday, following the Bills and Chiefs game, we're going to have a complete divisional round weekend post game report you get that here twitch.tv slash pro football so turn dials in for